Hi everyone, welcome back, welcome to my playlist and here I, I am Tarun Sharma and we are talking about Uber Eats clone app. So now we can start uh, digging the code, we can start talking about the Next.js application, how we are going to, going to connect it to the, the backend. So we will start the Next.js application, GraphQL integration with the Next.js app and how we can use Tailwind utilities with the Next.js applications and then how we can integrate it with the GraphQL APIs once they are ready. So let's get started. Let's dive in without any delay and let's start our journey with the Next.js application Uber Eats clone app. Okay, so let's start our coding and here I'm inside Uber Eats. This is a Next.js application and I'm able to do npm run dev because this is existing setup. You can see uh, from Next.js create template npm run dev and it should be able to launch the application, launch the dev server on 3000. Okay, successfully started. And we can see what is there on 3000 port. It's a, just a simple demo page is there. Okay. So if you look into the structure, here we have pages. Uh, post is for static site rendering. We have images, nothing much, styles. Here we can add uh, modules because in Next.js you can add the styles as a modules or you can also add a SAS. Here we are going to use the Tailwind utilities. Tailwind styles we are going to add with uh, two other pages which let's say login dot js. Is it a JavaScript or TypeScript? Looks like I created this as a javascript so obviously we need to change this to the typescript template first so for how we can convert that first of all dot js all the dot js files will get converted into dot ts files tsx files because these are components we don't have much code uh, i think we can get rid of this file and then we can just rename all these files so first of all we are introducing typescript so what does that mean we have to have a ts config file because we are using typescript as a compiler and then same thing we need to check in the package.json that do we have all the required dependencies or not so let's add all these first i don't like writing javascript at least in 2022 so npm install minus minus save tab here we are going to add typescript Okay, with that dependency, we can also check if we have Tailwind available. So TypeScript looks like is already there or not inside this. I need to check inside this particular package JSON. Okay, we don't have. So we need to install a lot of things. TypeScript is the dev dependency and then we need to add types node types react types react dom i mean here this is the baseline project in javascript and now we have to convert it into typescript there are other ways also you can just download the simple typescript template and then we need also need to so now let's take a look on the package json here we have these required dependencies what else we may need? Uh, I can think of uh, just, just is just optional. If we have test cases, GraphQL and all the other dependencies we will install later. Okay, so this is uh, inside dev dependencies. Now we can also create a update or build script. Okay, so let's add a TS config tsconfig.json file and what this file will contain the compiler option the target library and which files we are going to compile a default template it should include source and these are the library to support target is es5 and all the typescript compiler options we have for jsx we have react we don't have any types so we can keep this Okay, so we are just working on the configuration part. Here we have TypeScript and then 
we can just check okay what uh, is the change we need to make in our script because now we are not starting this directly always i open the root project it's not the correct here we are doing next dev right so here what will be the changes in the script so here we are doing npm run dev npm run build and npm run start so here we have added all the dependencies and then we can just simply do npm run dev and i'm able to start the server i just added these dev dependencies for jest node react react dom and the typescript we have added the ts config for it this is our ts json and we can simply do npm run dev we can also start the application on a different port you can just do is inside this package.json minus p and you can specify your port there it will start the application okay so next dev build and start now the next change is after adding the typescript we have to change the extensions okay this hello.js it's a default api we can change it to hello.ts so we have to rename the file this is typescript and the rest all will be tsx because these are record tsx login dot tsx i think we don't have many components so we don't need to worry about a lot of other things posts i think i can delete it we are not doing anything with this post routes this is public okay so json tailwind config npm run dev again okay it is rendering our default page which is index.js so inside pages you can see it's rendering index.tsx okay and we are using some styles i think i can remove this unit style and i can remove the sections which are getting impacted from this we'll just replace this thing with the tailwind utilities so i have index.tsx login and from styles we don't need these utils modules we'll remove it okay now next thing we are going to do is we are going to set up our tailwind tailwind config so here we are going to create a tailwind util utility file so we can just create so our application is working on port 3000 so our setup is working now what we can do is we can create login.tsx and another page is signup.tsx these are two components we are going to create and this is how the routing works in next.js you put whatever you put the pages inside the the pages folder it will become route if you create a folder let's say i have account and then inside that i'm creating index.tsx then there will be a separate route uh, forward slash account it will take you to the index.tsx or inside that if you have profile.tsx the route will become account uh, account forward slash profile okay so this is how the routes works in next.js because this is server side rendered application now we can set up the tailwind configuration in the next video we'll just open the overeats folder not the whole project because it is confusing sometimes so we are creating tailwind.config.js and we also need to create a post css config i will just bootstrap this with the, the basic colors and then i will just use whatever is needed so this is tailwind configuration the minimum configuration is this this is the minimum configuration you don't need to use plugin or tailwind forms if you're not using it so this can be empty font family can be empty but what i want is i'm using this particular font source sense pro and i'm using it 
so what i will do is first of all i will install this plugin i'm also using tailwind forms okay and this is the font file i mean this is the font name and these are the different colors i will just keep uh, only the gray colors and then in later i'm going to define my own theme so that i can use these colors so i can just use only base colors remove this so i have a couple of base colors and uh, i will be adding couple of more here like uh, base primary base secondary base ternary base buttons base background and you can add a number of uh, different set of colors here and we are not adding any we are not uh, modifying the default behavior of any other tailwind utility except the color and font family we are just adding these couple of more colors we are adding this font family we are not uh, just replacing all the existing colors which is provided by the default theme okay and then we have post css config i will just copy and paste this and then uh, we can just look into the setup what we are going to do is inside styles because in the tailwind configurations you have to add the utilities and in the next js application we have this one single global dot css so i don't want to declare anything i can just use these tailwind utilities which i have because they provides me everything tailwind based components and utilities and i am importing this global dot css inside app dot tsx this is the root file of the whole project you can say app dot tsx is included in each and every next js route so here i'm saying global dot css my tailwind styles has been added uh, right into this now let's see how our npm run dev is working we got the error can't find module let's add this module tailwind css and then we will do npm run dev again we can also check if any other dependency we are missing so tailwind css tailwind forms these two uh, styles we have added npm run dev it should start our application but we got some error let's see what it is auto prefixer so this is the dependency which we need to add because tailwind supports auto prefixer so it's a dev dependency we need to add let's see one by one we'll fix all these things save dev auto prefixer because we have created post css config and we also need to have post css tailwind css we have already created let's say a couple of more next images these are the dev dependencies i want to add auto prefixer and post css to support the tailwind runtime compilation and look into the package root json again okay there is only one thing uh, we need to use the tailwind css forms this library and that should be added in the main dependencies not in the dev dependencies the dependency name is tailwind css forms after that we will just do npm run dev and we'll see the magic so what are the code dependencies the next the react react dom and here we are using the type definitions for react react dom because we are writing dot tsx not dot js file npm run dev so it is starting our server on port 3000 okay we removed the styles that's were really bad and it is breaking so what we need to do is we are not using any styles uh, it's something very old and i will just put some default content in these pages login and sign up
and it is complaining for the styles modules okay but we don't have it can't resolve style okay component layout it is somewhere in the layout we also need to convert it into tsx because we are creating next js layouts or what i will do is i will just remove this components for now this is existing code i have app.jsx so render your component we don't have the layout for now you can just write your simple react component okay and i will copy this same in all the pages bear with me on that we'll change all these things compile successfully so we are good i think i will reload this page and this should start working i can add something in the h1 it works for the index page because this is the default route and we can see so this is how we are able to just get our the home page working index.tsx that means it will map to the forward slash route then we have a login sign up login and sign up these are all become route this is the login then we have a sign up so based on your file name the based on your file name this will become a particular route sign up and here i didn't put anything that's why it was not showing any message okay next thing is we are going to create layouts components hocs hooks and all those things so we can adopt any kind of uh, folder structure all the other components i'm going to create inside components like all the reusable components we can create here then we have hocs higher order components if you want to use oh i am creating it somewhere else let's focus on over its folder and then i will create uh, hooks if we are creating any hooks and redux services which will take care of calling the apis and we finally we need the layouts because we need to design the auth layout the the dashboard layout the user layout and based on that we need to create the components so inside components there can be a common component let's say the header footer and sidebar navbar in the hocs and we can also have a contexts okay simple folder structure and we also need to have a env file either you can have a .env or .env.local it looks for these files here you can populate your environment variable and that's it so this is our simple setup is ready for the next js type script application with all the folder structure and all now we can start adding the components start using the tailwind styles i'm going to using use react hook forms to build a simple hooks simple forms so i can just install that i will double check the name it can be react hooks form or react hook forms okay so i mean we will do this in the i will check and i will introduce that library and then what we will do we will create auth layouts and we will create the login and the sign up page using tailwind utilities because we have already added the tailwind utilities here and we can start writing using the classes like flags flags justify content row column all these different classes it provides okay so for the login and register now we can create the forms for the login i have created a simple form using react hook forms this is the library we are using to make our forms look nicer so this is the library and uh, i mean it is like proper documentation how to apply the form validations it is providing this register control which you can apply on all the input types like if this is required what is the pattern it should follow what should be the error message what should be the pattern error message you need to show all those things are there 
okay so i just used a simple login form to do this and here you can see i have a simple login form and i'm using use form hook and getting this register get values errors handle submit and form state so register with the control which we need to use for every text field get values you can use to get the value of any text field at any time errors will tell you uh, any errors if we have validation errors in the form object handle submit when you submit the form and form state if form state is valid or invalid that is needed while you are submitting the form okay so here it is a simple flex container uh, flex flex item center and inside this form i do have these two input controls first input and this is the second input so first input i am handling these two error messages for the password i have a single error message and how we are registering that reference register required and here reference register uh, required and then we have also have a pattern for the email because email that pattern should be satisfied and then placeholder required name basic properties we are passing and then we have a button component that is just displaying the accent text login and if the form state is valid i mean it is it, be, it will become clickable if you are passing all the input data inside a form is valid then it will become enabled so here we can see this getting rendered so this is our login component we haven't done any kind of integration to the graphql we just wrote a simple form using react hook forms and it has a two input text field and it has a validation also you can see and password and become enabled right because this is the button component and these are error message components we have form error and we are just passing the error messages okay simple form i can just copy and paste it inside a sign up because the the form is kind of similar what we are going to change if we talk in terms of okay what create account additionally is going to have so in create account we are going to have a couple of more fields first is we we can have a simple email then we will have a password and i think we can also have a username so email password role or something like that so the same form can be useful email and password and then third field is let's say we are going to have a select drop down so here we will add that in our case the role is simple okay if it is end user then it's end user if you are doing a creating a your account as a restaurant administrator then you are admin or for root root you cannot create from the ui you can just say okay create a new admin uh, create a new user of type role admin otherwise if you're not passing the role then it is a default end user who is going to buy the food okay i think uh, we can just specify it for now then we will see if we want to keep this or not so reference and here we pass register and inside that we just make required required is true that is inside reference here we can add a class name so class name is input because we are using tailwind forms so when it comes to the input when it comes to the form styles we can just use the the tailwind based the form styling and here we are going to have a, some kind of a map or some kind of array of roles so object dot keys user role so there are different user roles we have let's create a user role somewhere on the top here it can be simply export enum we will add the roles further i'm just covering admin for now admin as an admin role so this role we can pass inside the select drop down we have to show all the available roles in the application 
so let's go to create sign up object dot keys we have the roles so here we can do is simply map so iterate on all available values here we are getting role and index and we can return option option has a two properties what is the key key is the index and the rule is the property the value value itself okay so this is a simple select drop down and then we have a button which is the same form state dot is valid and here it instead of login we can just simply do sign up okay we can just try this sign up page instead of login yeah it works right here we can see the admin role and this is tailwind form styles because we are using class input everywhere so if i am adding everything correctly we can do the login so our both the components are ready i mean both the routes are ready these are the next js pages it will give us login it will give us sign up okay when we do the apollo integrations at the client side then a lot of things will happen on submit will get triggered when you are doing handle submit and through the on submit we will trigger a graphql mutation to the login graphql mutation similarly sign up graphql mutation and once mutation is done we are going to call a, a callback event so that is like okay now callback event will tell us what is the response from that mutation and then we can extract the data like if you are doing login the response would contain the token, token user information and something like that session information so on the on complete of that graphql mutation we can return the data to the callback and we will just initialize the user session so that we will do after graphql integration uh, at the client side like we can create apollo.ts start adding the the dependencies so majorly we what we do is we create apollo client in memory cache and http client which i remember from the react world it's kind of similar concept it's uh, just a react with the server side rendering nothing more than that okay so let's connect in the next video and we are going to integrate these both the forms which is a login and sign up form with some kind of a queries and then we will totally move to the back end with the Nesia services to fulfill the login and the sign up of the user.